So we're starting with this combining like terms, but we're going a little bit more in depth than we did before. Do you guys remember when we talked about combining like terms? The terms are held together like a magnet and they have their coefficient, that's the number in the front, the variable that's with it, and whatever sign is also in the front. What's invisible on this 3x? Is it positive or negative? Positive. So we don't put it there, but there is an invisible plus sign there to let us know that that 3x is positive. And that's important because if I start moving these terms around to put like terms together, then that plus sign might show up as I start making things visible, or um, as I start putting terms together. So let's look at what we have. We have an x here. Are there any other like terms that have just an x? Two. This 2x. So I'm going to want these two together. So let's rewrite it underneath as 3x. What's with the 2x? Is it positive or negative? Positive. And so that plus has to travel with it. When I combine like terms and it's a long list like this, I tend to underline the ones that I've done so I'm not leaving anything out. I used to cross them out, but then sometimes it got messy and I would lose them. You know, sometimes when you cross things out, you forget the last one or something. So by underlining, it's just helping me keep track. Do you guys see any other like terms there? Uh, 4x and 2x. Yeah, these two go together because we say this is 4x to the fifth power. Can everybody say that? 4x to the fifth power. What's with it in front? Plus. A plus. So let's write this is plus 4x to the fifth. And I'm going to underline the whole term. Notice I'm also underlining the plus sign because it's part of it. Remember that idea of a magnet holding the whole thing together? And what else did we find goes with it? 2x to the, X to the fifth, power. fifth power. What goes with it, though? Negative. A negative. A negative. So we're going to take this whole thing here, and we're going to put it with this because we want our like terms to be together. Okay? I've got two things left. Do they match? Yeah. Because remember, we call it a constant if it's a whole number that doesn't have a variable, but they're like terms, right? Yeah. So I can take this plus 3, and I can take this minus 1 and put them together. I don't have to do anything else at this point for moving. I can just start actually simplifying them. And, but I, I've told you guys this before, and I'll tell you many times this year. I'm a really visual person. So for me, there's one more thing I could do here to make it really obvious what goes together. I can use associative property, and I can group the ones that go together. Notice how I left the plus signs in between the parentheses? Yeah. Because remember, a plus means and. So we have these terms and these terms and these terms. Our answer is going to have three terms in it. Because we're going to combine these two, and what are we going to get? 5x. Yep, 5x and 2x to the fifth power. Exactly. Can you explain how you got it, Josh? Because I, I subtracted 4 and 2, and then, and then the, the variable, and then that's the that's perfect. I'm going to say it again in case people didn't hear him clearly. He took the 4 and the 2 and he subtracted them. And then the x to the 5th, remember that like term part, it's kind of like its last name. We're just going to combine the coefficients, which 4 minus 2 would be 2, and it keeps its last name. Does that make sense? And then what's my last term? 2. two. But I have to put my plus sign again. Okay. That one's nice because it all comes out positive, and when you're finished, I like to underline it or put it in a box or something to show off I'm finished. That's as simplified as I can get it. What if I had this? Mm -hmm. 
I'd like us to stick together for the notes. You'll be doing problems like this soon. Okay, what do you guys notice here that goes together? Yeah. There's two ways to read this. You can say negative 5x squared, squared or negative 5x to the second power. So everybody say, let's do the squared. Negative 5x squared, squared or negative 5x to the second power. second power. So Yvonne's right. This and this go together. So I've got negative 5x squared plus 2x squared. What else goes together here? Uh, yeah. Negative 4 plus 12. Okay, negative 4 plus 12. I'm going to put these in parentheses and these in parentheses, and I'm going to slip an and sign in there that was invisible before, but I'm going to make it visible. Because I've got these kinds and these kinds, and what's the first thing here? It's a negative. We want to keep that negative with that 4 because that's going to be important, okay? When I do negative 5 and positive 2, what do we get? Negative 3. Negative 3x three three squared. squared. And I have negative 4 and positive 12. Is my answer gonna, here going to be positive or negative? Negative. Negative. The triangle. Negative. The triangle doesn't work when we're adding or subtracting. It only works with multiplication and division. I'm going to zoom out so we can see our number line. Oh, it's going to be positive. This is negative 4. I'm starting down here. And positive 12, I'm going to travel up how many spaces? 12. And I'm going to end at 8. eight. My answer is going to be positive. positive. So the symbol putting these together down here is going to be positive. Okay? Let's try one next with a negative. Ooh, this one's kind of simple. There's no squares, we just have some simple x's and some constants. What's going to go together here? What do you guys see as like terms? Okay, I'm going to underline those two. Again, notice I'm also underlining a symbol that goes with them because it stays with them. And I'm going to rewrite those two down here. Oops. Negative 7x plus x. And I'm going to put them in parentheses and put an and sign. Why? Because these two go together, and I know these two are going to go together in their own parentheses, so I want to put my and. I can start the parentheses now. What am I going to put in my last parentheses set? <coughs> Negative 8 plus 2. How many terms are we going to have in our answer? Two. two. We have two sets of parentheses with like terms in them, right? Mm -hmm. What's negative 7x and x together? Um, negative 6x. Why negative 6x? Um, because there's an invisible one. There's an invisible one here. So I'm doing negative 7 plus 1 is only going to take us up to negative 6, and then it just keeps its last name. And then I have negative 8 and negative 2, and positive yeah. 2. Negative 8 and positive negative 2. Negative 2. I'm in negative 6. Negative 6. Ooh, they're both 6's. Six. Do you notice I left out the plus sign? Yeah. yeah. There's two ways I could write this, and I'm going to put an equal sign to show these two ways of writing it are the same because they're equal. I could put negative 6x plus negative 6. We never put a plus and a negative or a negative and a negative without the parentheses to separate them. This is the shortcut way. It's less writing and we like shortcuts in math. And this is the, I'm showing all of my invisibles and making them visible, but they mean the same thing. You guys ready for a complex one? Okay, start writing on the far left because it's gonna be really long.
How would we read that? 6x six six to, to the fourth power plus 5 minus 7x plus 4x to the third plus 7. I told you it was really long, right? I'm only halfway done. <laughs> minus 3x to the third plus 8x plus 4 minus 8x to the third power plus 5x. Shoot. It is long. There's a lot of like terms in there too. I have an answer. What's your question? The sixth um, x to the fourth power has no. Um, it has no matches, does it? Yeah. It's all by itself. So this is going to be lonely. Yeah, so lonely. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go then. I'm going to color code because there's a lot of stuff in here, isn't there? Yeah. So you're right, this one's by itself. Let's look at the next x that's got an exponent. What else do we have? Um, we have 4x to the third. 5 and 7. Let's find what has the matches to 4x to the third. What else is there? Um, Max? 3x to the third. What kind of 3x to the third? Mm, yep. Make sure when I'm highlighting that, I'm going to get it's, everything in there. Let's keep finishing this one first. What else? Is there anything else for this? 8x to the third. And it's a negative 8x to the third, so I want to highlight it in pink. I'm going to put them all together. What else did you guys see that goes together? Um, I'm going to use a different color for these. Seven, five and seven. Five, oh, I see you've got the constants. We'll do five positive. Seven is also positive. And then? Um, negative 7x and 5x. Negative 7x. And positive 5x. Positive 8x. Oh. And positive 5x. So I'll tell you what. We tend to write these in order from least to great, or greatest to least, greatest to least. And so we're going to put the 6x to the fourth first because it has the mm -hmm. highest power. Um, the color color. <gasps> I did, and what color should it oh, be? Blue. 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 Thank you. Do you guys see how color coding has kind of helped us? Because we're going to make our parentheses each of those sets. So we're going to start with the 6x to the fourth. It's all by itself. It's not going to get a parentheses. It has no pro no nobody else with its team. And then we're going to do a parentheses for which color do you think should come next? Blue. We want to go with the third, the x to the third, because we write these from the greatest exponent all the way down to constants being with no exponent. So let's start with this one. I'm going to put a parentheses. 4x to the third. I'm just going to put a little line under there to show that I got it. And then? Negative. Negative 3x to the third. And? Negative eight x. Okay. Put a parentheses and that I mean an and signed plus an and are the same, right? Thinking about English and math. And I'm gonna put a parentheses. Should we do yellow or blue next? Yellow. Why the yellow? Because it still has an x. exponent, right? Yeah. Let's start with the negative seven x. Plus what? Plus 8x. Positive 8x. And? Positive 5x. 5x. And we need one more set of parentheses for the ones we did in blue, don't we? We're going to do 5. Plus what? 8. No, it's 7. 7. And then 4. Plus 4. These take a lot of detail. Notice I put those lines underneath to show that I'm not leaving anything out.
And then we have to put together everything in those parentheses. Do you guys want to guess how many terms our answer is going to have? Four. It's going to have four. We're going to have this one, an x to the third term, an x term, and constants with no variables. Which one do you guys want to do first? Uh, let's do the, the, um, the three x. four x to the third. I agree we should bring the six x to the fourth done first because it's already done. It's <laughs> I don't want to put down a plus sign yet because I'm looking inside that next parenthesis and I see a lot of minuses. Yeah. Our answer to the x to the third might end up being negative, do you guys think? Yeah. And we can just go up and down the number line. We're starting at four. And we're going down how many? Eight. No, three. Three. Down three, so we're ending at one. one. And then we're going to go down how many more? Eight. And we're going to end at negative seven. seven. So this is minus seven x to the third. The third. The third power. Yeah, that's our shortcut. It really should be negative seven x to the third power, but we tend to just say negative seven x to the third. It's kind of like calling somebody by a nickname instead of their whole long name, right? Mm -hmm. You have to know it, but we have a shorter way. Okay, and then I'm gonna look here I've got negative 7x, positive 8x, positive 5x. There's two ways to do this. I could start at the negative 7, or I could put the 8 and 5 together first and then subtract the 7. What do you guys want to do? Let's do the um, adding that and then subtract. Okay, what's 8 plus 5? Start 12. 12. I mean 13. 13. 13 and what's 13, 13 minus X. 7? Uh, 13 minus 7 is 6. 6. X. So, and that's a positive 6x, so we can put a plus here. And then these are nice because they're all positives. 5 plus 7 plus 4. 16. Uh huh. How did you do it? Because 7 plus 5 equals 12, but that 12 plus 4 equals 16. That's not how I did it. I have another way. What'd you do? Um, 5 plus 4 plus 7. Yeah, I don't know. For me, knowing my 9s plus anything is faster for me, so I put the 5 and 4 together first. But going 12 plus 4, same. I mean, we get to the same place, right? It's just, I like to hear how different people do different mental math. Okay, so 16 is our end, and that's it. That giant long thing, count, let's count how many terms I had in the first part of the problem. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, came down to 4. Do you guys see now why I don't say solve these? We call this simplify because we don't know what the x is we really don't know what this whole thing equals we just have it as simplified as we possibly can without knowing the x and guess what i have for you tomorrow we're going to have a scavenger hunt and it's going to have some long problems and it's going to have some shorter problems. They're still recording. And the idea will be, you're going to start somewhere. I'll show you how to do this tomorrow. And you'll just solve what's in there. This is not the answer for this card. It's the answer from a different card. So you'll solve this, and you'll have to go find where this one's answer is. And that's your next problem to solve. Will that be some good practice? And you'll be up out of your seats. You're still recording. I could have started it today, but the copy are jammed, and I need to find out what I'm missing. So, yeah. I know. So, I'm going to give you guys some more problems on the left side. I'm just going to make them up. I think it's a good idea to have the number line out. Can we solve it? Because when we're just combining like terms and we're not doing distributive property, Distributive property needs multiplication. These are just, we're going up and down on the number line, or left and right, okay? So, here's a few problems for you guys to solve. Hmm? Oh, I forgot to stop.